Welcome everybody to another video. We're gonna cover proxies. I know many people have asked me this. It's going to be a long one because I'm gonna cover a lot of information about all the proxies, the more interesting ones with share analysis, with chart analysis. So first I'll go over the main list. After that, I'm gonna select the best ones I have ratios people are talk, talk to me about calculating ratios for the different proxies I did including MicroStrategy so you have a relationship between market cap and the crypto assets and we'll go to the charts so here this is a website called treasuries.bitbo.io and you have all the information about companies ETF categories of assets that have Bitcoin as part of them. And this is updated quite frequently. As you see here, the last update is the 8th of November of 2024. I'm doing this video on the 10th of November, 2024. So only two days off. There could be glitches. There could be off values here and there, but usually this is quite accurate. The first chart that you see here is the amount related to the 21 million of Bitcoin that the ETFs have, the countries have, public companies, private companies, mining companies, and DeFi projects. So you see it here. This is calculated related to the 21 million Bitcoin, but I would advise to calculate this with about 15 million Bitcoin because five or six million of Bitcoin are lost permanently. Therefore, the total supply, yes, in theory, and as per, per, for the protocol, it's 21 million, but they, we have tons of Bitcoin that have been lost. So the real, more accurate number, in my opinion, is 15 million Bitcoin, no more than that. So these numbers are actually undervalued or underrepresented, if you if you want. So this website is a very nice website where you can track who's accumulating, how much Bitcoin they have. Only Bitcoin is tracked in this website, no other crypto assets. So I'll make that adjustment later on, especially for a few of the proxies that we have covered here in the channel where they have other crypto assets in their balance sheet. So we'll go over quickly about this list and I'll tell you already which assets I'm going to keep and which I'm not going to cover and the reasons why I'm not going to cover them. Them. So the first one, top of the list, everybody knows that. This is MicroStrategy with 252,220 Bitcoin as the latest news. Marathon Digital Holdings I will not cover as a proxy because I completely remove all the Bitcoin miners. The main reason is because first, I don't invest in them. Second, it is extremely difficult to get some kind of normal trend for Bitcoin miners. There's a lot of competition and it's very, very difficult to discern a clear path of profitability for them, but also chart related. Are they going higher? Are they going lower? It is extremely volatile. Actually, it's it's crazy volatile, these miners. So all the miners, I will not consider them as good proxies because I want to protect you guys from losing money in investing in those assets. I don't do it and I highly advise not to invest in them. And if you do less than 2% of your portfolio, 1% of your portfolio, if you want to gamble, but it, it's extremely difficult. So that's why I do not include them. I'll highlight which ones I know they are miners. So Riot Platform is also another miner. Tesla, many people don't know. Tesla owns 9,720 Bitcoin. Tesla has been exploding recently. And not many people know Bitcoin is contributing to that explosion, even though it's small part of the market cap, but it's still contributing. 
Parade, another miner, I'm not gonna cover. Coinbase, Coinbase has 9,000 Bitcoin, it surged in price recently, I think it had a day of 30%, but investors who bought at the IPO are still underwater, that's why I don't invest in Coinbase. CleanSpark, another miner, Block is a crypto mining company, that one we'll cover. Galaxy Digital Holdings, we will cover. Bitcoin Group is from Germany. I don't think I covered it. We'll double check later. Hive Digital is another miner. Voyager Digital is in bankruptcy, so uh, you cannot trade this uh, stock. Cypher Mining is also another miner. Nexon is a Japanese company we're not going to cover. We don't have access to those uh, stocks anyways. Exodus Movement, I think we're going to cover. Broker Groups, Brook from Bangkok, we are not going to cover because I don't have access to those shares. Similar Scientific, we will cover. Meta Planet, I won't cover because it's a Japanese company. Bit Digital, I think I don't cover because it's a minor. May 2 is from uh, Hong Kong, I believe. We're not going to cover. Bitfarms, another miner. Funware, we're going to cover. NFT is from the UK, we're not going to cover. DMG, Blockchain Solutions, I think it's another miner. Alliance, we may cover it. Mercado Libre, yes. Net Holdings, Anonym, from Turkey, no. Neptune Dig Digitals, yes, we'll cover that one. Advanced but Bitcoin Technologies from Germany, no. Digital X, I think. Think we're gonna cover even though it's from Australia uh, LQWD we're gonna cover big digital also bank shareholdings also DeFi technologies to BTS to DigiHost no Canada compute initial unlimited no Sato technologies no from what I recall FRMO yes Metro mile no Mogo, yes, and Argo blockchain is another miner. Finally, just to give you an idea, here are countries that own Bitcoin. USA leads with 270,000. Second is China. UK is third. Ukraine is fourth. Bhutan is mining quite a lot, is in the chart. El Salvador, one of the smallest countries. Also, Bhutan is also very small. They have quite a lot of Bitcoin. Finland, Georgia, and Germany was removed because they sold all their Bitcoin at the worst ever time. So that made the news. This list will grow and will grow fast. If for whatever reason the US assigns Bitcoin as a critical asset to hold, many countries will follow. And finally here, some of the private companies that own Bitcoin. I'll let you look at the list. And the final one is the ETFs here. Mainly the top three that you could look at. IBIT 2.13% out of 21 million already. Over 447,000 Bitcoin they own already. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust 219,000. Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund 190,000. Note that these three entities are not the full owners of all those Bitcoins. I hear that all the time in X, on articles and things like that. Yes, BlackRock on its own as a company has Bitcoin in its balance sheet. I don't know exactly how many they have but it's not 447,000. The majority of Bitcoin that is in IBIT, the owners are our customers of BlackRock. So they don't control the whole amount of Bitcoin. They can influence those investors, yes, but they are not the owners of all this big, these Bitcoin. So whoever thinks that 300,000 Bitcoin can be dumped in one shot out of the IBIT ETF are mistaken because each individual who owns their own pile of shares of the Bitcoin trust can decide what to do at every single day. So 
BlackRock does not have full control of all this Bitcoin. The same argument applies to Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and the Fidelity and all the other ETFs. It's always the same thing. But people say, oh, BlackRock is concentrating all the Bitcoin and they'll have control over the network. No, it's not going to happen like that. You have thousands of owners within IBIT. So the only way that these coins can have some kind of impact if everybody does the same thing. And trust me, a lot of Bitcoiners in there do not want to sell their, their shares. So that fear, you can toss it away. I think it's irrelevant and it doesn't apply here. So we got over the list. Now we'll go into Excel. I made some calculations. I'll share that with you. And after that, we'll go to the charts. Probably going to focus mainly on weekly charts to go over all the companies so you guys have an idea of what I think about them, if I invest in them or not, and you will have a big picture of all current up-to-date proxies that have Bitcoin and some of them have other crypto assets. So many people that are watching my proxy videos have asked me to do calculations of ratios to discern or try to evaluate if some stocks are undervalued related to their crypto assets that they hold in their different balance sheets. So I selected here 19 stocks. It's quite a lot. We'll go over the list, but I want to give you a guys idea of how I build this thing. So you have the ticker of the stock here at MSDR, MicroStrategy, what market, NASDAQ. The numbers that you see on that line are in USD. This is the stock price. This is the market cap in million. This is the value of the crypto assets that MicroStrategy has in number of million. They only have Bitcoin. And I took the most recent reported value, which was uh, 252,220 Bitcoin. And I selected one price of today of 79,664. This, the price is moving constantly. So I had to set up a, a number and this is applied to the whole section. And after that, what I do is you go to here, the last column, which is the market cap. I'm showing you guys what, what it is. So you take the market cap divided by the crypto assets and it gives you that ratio. So this is the benchmark that we're going to compare it to. Keep in mind that MicroStrategy, the whole, almost the whole company is Bitcoin related. Some other companies have only a portion of them. Others have quite a lot similar to MicroStrategy. So I'll cover them one after the other. Here we have stocks that are in the US market. In the OTC, they're all in the US market, but there's also Canadian companies here, mainly in the TSX venture and the CBOE and the TSX and the CSE, which are all Canadian markets. So when the company is Canadian, I stated here, the numbers are in Canadian dollars, if not, there are in US dollars, USD. You can pause the video, you can look at it, look at the numbers, and you can build that on your own too with whatever is reported by each company to be able to calculate the ratio, okay? So like I indicated, many companies have a lot of Bitcoin, some a little bit, and others have multiple assets. And here are the other assets that uh, I included in this chart, Solana, Ethereum, Atom, Polkadot, this is Graph, I believe. Uh, one company has shares of SpaceX and cash. I put cash when I had that information. If not, I did not put it. This is a simplified proxy uh, calculation. I wanted to share it quickly with everybody. So it's just a big picture. Okay, obviously the thing that you need to understand is that we're just gonna go over the ratios because it's going to be quicker, but you can pause the video and look at all the numbers, stock price, market cap, um, and the value in millions here of the crypto assets. I put it from the, big, the, the company that has the most Bitcoin to the one that has less. The only exception is the last position here. I put it at 19, but <coughs> it's just that sole strategies has Bitcoin and Solana and the biggest chunk 
of crypto assets is Solana. That's the only one that is like that. The others, it's mainly Bitcoin, except for Neptune digital assets. So let's look at the ratios. As you see, MicroStrategy, the reference, it's 2.73. The ratio for Tesla as, yes, they have a Bitcoin position, but it's a small fraction of their market cap. It's over 1,200. That's the ratio. There's another company also, which is a Mexican company listed on the, Na on the NASDAQ, Mercado Libre. They have Bitcoin, but related to their market cap, it's over 2,000. So these two, yes, they're proxies, Bitcoin will contribute to their to the uh, market cap, but the impact is quite low. So in my opinion, everything that is below five, ratio five, and even if if the it's the ratio is below of micro strategy, it becomes really really interesting. So for Coinbase, it's almost 100, so not that interesting. Block it's 70, the same thing. Galaxy Digital is 10. Here we're approaching five for Exodus movement. We will look at the charts after, so you will see also what type of charts they have because some uh, may have like really boring or very bad looking charts. So we'll see which ones are better. So Sembler here looks interesting. This is a uh, funware. Like I said, Mercadorably not. Neptune Digital Assets is at 2.12, which is lower than MicroStrategy. So that again is interesting. This company has an investment of 4.1 million in SpaceX. And they have indicated that they could increase that position eventually. And they have all these um, cryptos including Ethereum, Solana, Bitcoin, Atom, Polkadot, Graph like indicated. So this one has a basket of crypto assets. We will see in the future if they raise cash how they're going to deploy it. But from what I know most of these assets within the balance sheet of the company are being placed in a staking type, type of environment to generate passive income. So they will be accumulating more and more of these assets plus whatever they buy. So Nipton Digital Asset looks very interesting. I own it, just for disclosure. Then you have Digital X at 1.12, which is the lowest ratio that we have here. LQWD also has 1.72. This company is the one that is involved in the Lightning Network. They're using their Bitcoin to establish like Lightning Network channels and collect fees out of that. So they will accumulate sats that will eventually be added to the balance sheet. Next one is Big Digitals. This one is quite particular because we don't have any information of the assets that, that they own, but I know that the crypto assets are around 20.4 20, 20 million, according to their uh, presentation on their website out of the market cap. So that allowed me to calculate this ratio. It's a little above the one from MicroStrategy. Another one that is below is Banksa Holdings. After that, DeFi Technologies is over 6 not that interesting this one is BTCS also interesting then we have 80 not interesting Mogo over 20 not interesting and HODL which had a huge huge explosive price went as high as a ratio of I believe in the nines nine point something but now it corrected uh, quite a bit and now the ratio is 4.62 again below that five type of ratio obviously it's above micro strategy so we'll have to see how this ratio moves with time moves with the increased value of bitcoin and the different assets so strategies have has two assets bitcoin and solana and just recently they sold some part of the bitcoin that they have to buy more solana and in this case this company has invested in validators and also stakes Solana for passive generation of income. So they're going to continue accumulating Solana. I own this asset because I have a lot of conviction towards Solana. So now you can pause, like I said many times here, pause the video, look at the ratios. These are the more interesting ones. 
Again, I removed all the different miners and the companies that were not available in the US or Canadian market. That's what I pretty much did. I did not include the ETFs in here. You could actually technically you do the same thing for the ETFs if you want, but they're more trading one-to-one -one with Bitcoin. So technically their volatility should be very similar to the one from Bitcoin. Now, let's go and have a look at the charts. Sorry for the long video, but I wanted to do it as complete as possible for the core investors who want to have the whole information. I will go over the 19 charts, one after the other. I know that some have a bad ratio, but you can remove them if you're not interested related to the ratio but they could still be good companies to invest depending on how the chart will behave. I'll just give you a quick overview of what I think, if I own the shares or not, and what's my overall take on the company. First in line, MicroStrategy, ticker MSTR. The stock is exploding, it's in a vertical structure, it's going higher, it's gonna follow Bitcoin and it's going to be tricky to actually add to your positions at better zones because I believe that Bitcoin will just explode in price. Right now it's around 80,000. 80, it's getting to 80,000 and we're very close to 100K. I don't know exactly how fast we will get there. If we're going to have like really long consolidation periods or very short ones. So it's very tricky to at to your position here i just give you an idea i own the stock and i added a few shares on friday or last thursday sometimes it can be a high price and then it will correct i'll try to do it on red days it's not necessarily easy but that's what i suggest but this stock is exploding right now and many people don't understand how intelligent they are with raising cash issuing shares and then extracting that value in cash and put it strategically in Bitcoin. They will be buying $42 billion worth of raised money and put it in Bitcoin. Only MicroStrategy in combination with iBit, the ETF from BlackRock, that's tons of buying pressure on Bitcoin. And that's enough to secure a constant buy of this asset for the next three years potentially. Therefore, we could say bye-bye to the bear market maybe. We will see. We'll have to track it. But so far so good. MicroStrategy is dominating. And as they add more and more Bitcoin, they're going to get more and more volatility and the moves could get bigger and bigger. So now that you're playing in the billions of dollars, watch out, this stock will explode. That's my opinion. Not financial advice, but that's what I believe. And many companies will try to catch up a little bit, maybe MicroStrategy, but I don't believe that there's going to be another one who most of it its assets will be Bitcoin like MicroStrategy. I don't think anyone will do that, but some will add to their balance sheet for sure. That's my take on MicroStrategy. Next, again, the weekly chart. This is Tesla and we just have had one of the greatest days for Tesla recently and I could not let it go and I had to have a position. So I had sold previously because I thought that the uh, crypto proxies would move faster than Tesla. That was the case, but I didn't think that it would have a big response like that to the share price. The stock went up a lot in the last few trading days and it's targeting the all-time high of 407 or up to $415. It's gonna get there very quickly. So that's why I started a position in Tesla. It's not as big as my proxies, but it's still a position because I wanted to be part of this stock. 
the stock has tons of potential. I'm planning on doing a video specifically on Tesla. It's gonna perform well. The company is printing money right now, is generating positive cash flow, generating cash so the company is not in any danger of running out of money. It's a no-brainer to have shares of this company for the next 10, 15 years for sure. They're going to make a lot of money. So that's why I started my position. And I indicated in previous videos that if for whatever reason we get some kind of peak and we get an altcoin season and then we have a bear market, I will sell most of me of my altcoins, gather that money and invest heavily on Tesla during the bear market because I believe the stock will continue to go up. And after that, if we have an end of a bear market for the crypto assets, I will take some of the profits from Tesla and put them back in the crypto space, either to buy more Bitcoin, more Solana, more Sui, for example, or any other coin that has a lot of potential at that time. It could be even memes like we have seen so far in 2024. So, Tesla, the ratio is quite high because they have a small portion of Bitcoin in their balance sheet. We are not, we could be surprised maybe if they add a little more Bitcoin on their balance sheet. They could decide to do that. They have a lot of money to do that. I don't think this, that's the plan, but if they would do that, then it would push their price up and it would bring awareness of Bitcoin even more because it's associated with Tesla and also because it's associated with Elon Musk. So that's another option there. Technically, it's still a proxy because they have Bitcoin in their balance sheet. Next in line is Coinbase. And like I said, Coinbase here is at a very, very critical level. 270, that's a big uh, resistance. It has failed to break above that level two times before. Right now, I guess it's going to break above it now because of the momentum of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going higher. But for those who invested in the stock, there's, it was a very long period of recovery. It took a long time and probably many people lost money here on the way down. I'm guessing many people sold near the bottom here. We're not able to weather all the volatility the stock is coming back, but it took a really, really long time. Even though I have a Coinbase account, I do not plan to buy Coinbase in the near future. I think there are faster ways. Even some of the proxies, I believe, are going to be more profitable than Coinbase, but it's up to you to decide what you want to do. But at the stage, it could still reject. If it goes back down, it should be very bearish for Coinbase, but because they have quite a lot of Bitcoin in their balance sheet and they are collecting fees from all their trading, they're bound to make a lot of money in this bull run. And this should allow them to go beyond 270 and maybe come back to the initial price of the launch. We will see, but I'm not invested in the stock. Now a block, the ticker as is, SQ block and you see it here even though it has a position in Bitcoin well the stock has not done a lot in well since this drop which was in November of 2021 so November 2022 23 24 so that's three years of negative performance for the block I would not touch the stock, not right now. And I would technically wait until it gets above $90 and maybe even clearly above 100 before investing. At this stage, something happened with Block that did not pan out or the strategy did not work or they're not generating enough cash to have positive momentum. Like I said, I'm just analyzing the charts right now. I don't know a lot of the background of these companies or most of these companies. I knew something about Tesla, MicroStrategy, 
Coinbase, I don't know a lot, and uh, Block, I have absolutely zero idea what they're doing. So, but the chart say that the stock at this stage is in a consolidation period. When it will break out upwards or downwards, we don't know. Have a look now at Galaxy Digital under the OTC ticker BRPHF. This one has momentum. This one jumped recently 7%. You see the green candle here. We are at a golden cross, so it has momentum up and to the right. This also was consolidating quite a bit between 2022 and 2023, but since October of 2023, it has had a nice run up. So this could be a good mover moving forward. I don't own it and I do not plan on getting in Galaxy Digital, but you see it clearly on the chart here is better than Block for sure. It has gained some momentum up and to the right and that's what we want to see. Next in line, Exodus Movement. This one has done a 180 pretty much and it's coming back. The one thing that I dislike is these gaps in prices. It doesn't seem to be as liquid as the other assets that we have just covered. So be careful with Exodus and it has been consolidating between $12 and $22 since April of 2024. So if it breaks above that, if it gets at $20, $24, something like that, then it could be really, really cool, but it doesn't seem to have enough liquidity, in my opinion, to be able to get in and out of the asset quickly, but it's not on a downside trend and it's not really bearish. So at this stage, I would say the stock is neutral. They have Bitcoin in the balance sheet, so you can actually follow its movement for the upcoming weeks to see if it starts really moving. Next in line, Sembler Scientific, SMLR. This chart looks very similar to the one of Block where we had the initial pump and now we have a consolidation period. So I would not get involved in the stock if it does not go above $50. I would start getting really interested at $54, $55, not before that. But it seemed to have picking up a little bit more volume than usual lately. You can follow this asset in the upcoming weeks to see if it breaks out or not. I do not own Sembler and do not plan to get a position in this stock. This is the stock Funware. Yes, it has Bitcoin as balance sheet, but it just does these uh, corrections, pump, correction, pump, correction, pump, correction, small pump, correction, and now it's going down. So the momentum of this stock is not that great. I would not touch this company with one cent of my money. I would avoid it completely, even though we have information that they have Bitcoin in their balance sheet. It's negative. It was negative on Friday, even though we had like a really nice push from all the proxies or most of them at least, and uh, I would avoid it completely. So the ticker is P-H-U-N, do not touch the stock. So this now is Mercado Libre. Uh, the ticker is M-E-L-E, -E, Meli. This is a huge, huge company uh, in Mexico, Central America, from what I recall. They sell all kinds of things. They have Bitcoin in their balance sheet and Chart-wise, it has momentum up to the right. It had a big resistance at $2,000. Failed once, failed twice. Here was broken and came back again. So this was a fake out and now we're trading at 1872. So you want to have a clear breakout at $2,200. If they ever get there, then it's going much, much higher because this level of 2000 will become a very important support. The momentum is still there, but it's trying to get away from that 2000 level and it's getting there, but it hasn't clearly broken out. But the momentum is positive. It looks like a solid company. It's up to you to decide 
if you want to get involved in Mercado Libre. I don't own it and don't plan to invest in it. So Neptune Digital Assets, one of the ones that have that has quite a nice ratio. You see clearly here that we exploded in price from 30 cents up to a peak of $1.25. We corrected down, now we're trading above at 98 cents. We have a nice support around 95 and even 90 cents. So as long as we stay above that level, we should be fine. Volume is back, but we got recently uh, a nice correction, healthy correction. But I believe that now with the jump of Bitcoin from 77 to almost $80,000 during the weekend, we could see a nice pump in price on Monday. Let's see. I own this stock. I'm planning to keep it for a while because of the ratio. I think it's undervalued, but we need to see if they're going to be able to raise cash to add to their crypto positions. And also, I'm very curious to know how they're going to deploy those funds if they get them to accelerate the growth of their balance sheet, the value of their crypto assets, and see that grow with the market. So the potential is there. There's going to be quite a lot of volatility. I expect these proxies to move up and also correct quite a bit. One thing that I'm going to say here at this stage is that you also need to expect 5% corrections, 10% corrections, or maybe even 15 or 20% corrections from Bitcoin at one point during this exponential phase. It's not going to go up and up and up and up and up for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. It's going to correct eventually and that will impact the proxies some more than others but these could be really 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 nice entry points for those proxies just keep that in mind so this is a digital x who has from what i recall a nice ratio the ticker is dggxf but no activity on the stock no response from the last week upwards no momentum actually a correction on friday of almost seven percent so at this stage without any action or response of this proxy with the bitcoin that they have in their balance sheet i would not advise to get into the stock follow it maybe and see if it eventually starts moving but at this stage i would not touch it i don't own it and don't plan to take a position not financial advice. Now, LQWD Technologies, one of the other stocks that has quite a nice ratio. It's moving upward, trying to break out here on the weekly chart. It corrected a bit. It's trading at $1.59. This is uh, in Canadian dollars. You also have the uh, OTC equivalent. You can look at it also for the American investors. But we have a resistance at $2.05. This is going to be challenging to break above it. But if we break above that, we're going to $3, $4, even $5 very quickly. So LQWD has potential, but it needs to keep its momentum going. We'll see how this goes. Now let's have a look at big digital, big digital assets. This one doesn't trade a lot. That's the uh, weakness about this asset. It doesn't have like a lot of shares traded per day, not a lot of liquidity. It has corrected quite a bit from 22 cents up to 19 cents. Quite healthy. We'll see if it bounces again. But I would like to have more volume in this asset. But the, the momentum is positive and it's going up and to the right. It has digital assets in its balance sheet. This is the one that we don't know exactly what they own. It could be a nice potential proxy, but I like better the ones that clearly state what they own. This is Banksa Holdings or the OTC. As you see, it's going down to the right. It's responded 
with the 12% candle on Friday. The momentum is down. I would wait for a nice positive breakout above the ME200 even before getting into it. It doesn't look that liquid because you see that the, all these gaps in prices here. At this stage, I would not touch it. I will probably track it and see if it could have a return in momentum. But the lack of liquidity puts me a little nervous. So I would not be looking into buying this position at this stage. Here we have DeFi Technologies who had a, quite a nice run following the MA200 and now somehow something happened and we're correcting so we're correcting while the prices are exploding that's a little weird to me but it could be just because we have have a nice run up we stopped at three dollars got rejected here that was a fake out here rejected again here and now we're starting a trend down Maybe it's just a healthy correction to potentially 180 or something like that and then bounce back again. Could be the case. It's going up and to the right, but now it's correcting. I would not buy the stock at this stage. I would wait for a clear consolidation and upwards movement, green candles up and to the right with volume to get into this asset. For now, I would put this one on the lookout. This is BTCS from the NASDAQ and this stock is going nowhere so quite nicely short and sweet I would not touch it, this asset even though it has Bitcoin in its balance sheet. Now this one is interesting this is FRMO on the OTC this one has broken out recently from this huge consolidation period that since 2023 never broken clearly above $7.60 $7.80 and we just cleared it in September of 2024 since then it has jumped in price from $7.80 to $9.20 it has momentum it's going up and to the right it could be due to Bitcoin maybe it's a proxy to look into and evaluate what's it doing with Bitcoin. Is it planned to increase its allocation to Bitcoin or not? Or is the what type of business is also? I don't have that information right now. So depending on the business side and what their Bitcoin strategy is moving forward, it could be an interesting proxy to have. This is Mogo from the NASDAQ. And I would not touch this stock at this stage. It has corrected from 220 up to $1. It's a very big correction. It bounced back recently, but I would find that kind of risky compared to the other ones. We have other proxies here that are better structure chart-wise. So I would not advise to look into this one. And finally, we have HODL here, which is the sole strategy. This is the only proxy that is accumulating Solana. Solana is more volatile than Bitcoin, so we should expect volatility greater than the Bitcoin proxies. It has a ratio that it's slightly above the one of MicroStrategy. It's below five from what I recall. It was above nine or just below 10 just recently when the price went up to 220 and 232 now it came back it's a healthy correction it has corrected quite a bit and I believe it's due to a bounce we will see how it will bounce I have a position in this company I plan to keep it because I have a lot of conviction on Solana Solana blockchain Solana's future and like indicated this company has validators they're staking their solana and they're generating passive income we need to see how they're going to raise cash or issue shares in the future to add to their position throughout this bull run and maybe even during the bear market we need to follow these proxies quite a bit this one is very peculiar because it invested in solana uh, other important things to know is that 
I think Brazil just recently approved a Solana ETF. Many are in the works in the US. Are the regulations are going to be favorable for Solana to be approved as an ETF in the US? Will it be something that people would like to invest more than in the um, Ethereum ETF, for example? I am not expecting them to be as popular as the Bitcoin one. But if somehow the ETFs get approved in the US, that could bring a lot more investors into Solana and this would skyrocket in my opinion because of the activity, the different sectors it planned to disrupt, which I believe are going to be payments and trading eventually if they have really high transaction rates high TPS and I believe that if they achieve close to the million transactions per second that they are aiming to, they will disrupt payments, they will disrupt Visa, MasterCard, in my opinion. They will also be involved in the trading shares eventually because of the low fees and the fast TPS. So Solana has a lot of potential here, even though the coin is not that old. It has already taken a lot of market share from Ethereum and I believe it's gonna catch up to Ethereum very very quickly it could catch up Ethereum in 2025 if not it's going to be in the next cycle for sure unless something major happens with the chain that blocks it somehow but the momentum right now with the Solana blockchain is huge that's why I'm involved in investing in soul strategies at this stage because I believe it has a lot of potential. So I know it's been a very long video. I wanted to be thorough and share as much information as I could from all the different proxies that I discovered. Let me know what you think of the video. Should I trim it down for, to only the best ones that I believe we should follow? Let me know, put the comments on the under the video and I will review them and future updates can be modified uh, depending on what people want to see from future updates. So I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Have a nice weekend.